Hello, this is Ryan at Modern Papist. Uh, in this video, I wanted to go over the link and disconnect people have in both dating and sex. That is to say, the expectation people have for both and how those expectations feed into each other. If you like this type of discussion, please hit that like button. Uh, if not, you know, hit the dislike button. Either way, it's good for me to know uh, in terms of feedback, so I'd really appreciate it if you did that. All right, let's get back into the discussion. We live in a highly sexualized culture, so the idea that sex is treated like a rec recreational event more than one of self-sacrificing love and respect shouldn't be surprising. It's treated like a late night snack with apps ordering one night stands. Sex as it is generally understood in the culture is expected to happen by the time you go to college. The view of sex is very low. It is good in most people's eyes, but only for objectification and self-gratification. Sex is expected when people start to date. Don't ask me whether or not it's the first date, second date, or third date. Growing up, I was told in most cases it was the third date, but this of course leads to pregnancies out of wedlock, or unfortunately, abortions. Which brings me to the problem. Our expectation of sex does not include the natural consequences of it. We isolate it from the very product it produces, which is a new person. Sex has what, what is called a natural end. It does not exist for its own sake. Bonding is part of that equation, but without the principle of the natural end of pregnancy, it creates a problem. Which brings me to dating. Dating has become a shadow of what it once was. Instead of dating with the purpose of finding someone compatible to marry, it is becoming seemingly infinite regress of boyfriends, girlfriends, and maybes. The idea that you date to have fun shows a priority in the self and not one of self-giving. A lack of commitment and focus on one's emotions. Furthermore, there is an illusion of commitment. Typically, it is the woman that is the one that has the expectation that there may be more to the relationship than just fun nights and sex. On the other side of that coin, typically the man takes advantage and stays in this boyfriend status. In that person's mind, it is all the benefits of a true commitment with the ability to leave at any time. The natural end of dating is marriage. That is the fulfillment of the investment to one another. Add both of those expectations together and they feed one another. When you have sex in a dating relationship going nowhere, you have the image of bonding and commitment. The problem is the true commitment isn't really there. The other person can walk at any time. You may be acting like you're married, but you aren't. Have you ever had that friend couple where they act very mature in public? You know they're having sex from conversations you've had with them, and, and they're living together, and they'll occasionally say they're basically ma married whenever the topic comes up. I mean, I, I know I have. With, I've also seen them split in a very bad way. And thankfully, in the cases I've seen, no kids were involved. Marriage has a really bad image, and that's somewhat understandable. Many people come from broken homes, like myself. Parents divorced, got remarried, and we got to witness all the crap that went on between them. We were told that we could adapt and that it was good for us, even though every study on the topic showed the opposite. Marriage for men has gotten a bad rap because of the many legal challenges when it goes awry, so they don't want to take the risk. But of course, the problem isn't that. The problem is, of course, that they're already looking for a way out, keeping their options open and trying to find justifications for their position because they fear commitment. Dating while having sex affects the view of sex. If the dating is going nowhere, the sex isn't either, or at least in the minds of those doing it. The consequences aren't thought of because there is this focus on the present experience instead of the self-sacrificing commitment. Sex within marriage has protection and walls because of the commitment laid down in the marriage. There have been acts of self-sacrifice and a public proclamation between the families that this union is very much important. It is before the eyes of God and something to die for. You aren't worrying about whether your boyfriend will have one last snack before leaving or your girlfriend dumps you because the sex went bad. If you're just dating or dating to have fun, this is the expected outcome. Unfortunately, within those hollow relationships, when sex produces a child, because no contraception is 100% effective, a number of choices are thrown at the couple that needs to be addressed. 
The first one is what happens to the child. And unfortunately, we know many of those choose abortion. Many men act like cowards and promote the killing of their child, while many women think of themselves before the baby. Some do keep the child, which goes to the next question of, what about us? Well, will we get married? Will we move in? Some do choose to get married. Others choose to move in or stay moved in, depending on their circumstances, which is the literal product of themselves, not to mention they share a mortgage or have three animals together or this, that, and the other thing that seems to substitute for them looking like they're actually married. God through the church has taught that marriage is meant to be the place for sex. It is in fact the identifying act between the couple, hence the term marital act. Dating has a purpose. That purpose is to look for someone you want to marry, that you're compatible with. Sex has a purpose. That purpose is, in principle, procreative, and the bonding of the married couple. When you drop either one, you end up with problems. Our culture has shown that as well as natural law. Teach your kids about self-sacrifice. Show your kids self-sacrifice. St. Joseph, pray for us.